Hey gang, answering the fruit question once and for all, do you have to quit fruit in order to quit sugar? Dried fruit, fruit juice, honey, maple syrup, where do you draw the line? Sweeteners, super important part of the topic. I, I really, I have to answer this question so much, I thought I'd do a video on save us all sometime, okay? So I'm totally fascinated by this question, totally fascinated by the results over 20,000 detoxes, thousands of one-on-one -on -one clients. At this juncture, gang, this is just pattern recognition, okay? This is us recognizing when people succeed and when they fail. And so what I'd like to tell you today, I'd like to start with the, I'll start with the no-nos, okay? And the no-nos, you probably know this, but deep, deep in your heart, you wish it wasn't that, wasn't the answer, wasn't the answer that I'm going to give. But when you're looking at dried fruit and fruit juices, you have to take them right off the table. It's just too concentrated fructose, okay? Too sweet, hitting the liver with such veracity that it, it doesn't know the difference between Coca-Cola and orange juice, your liver, okay? And the it's so concentrated that it has as much sugar content and fructose content as a Coca-Cola when you're drinking a glass of fresh squeezed organic orange juice. Okay, gang? So you got to take those right off the table. Now, there's other sweeteners in, you know, that people talk about agave. Agave actually has over 70, 60 to 70 percent uh, fructose. So it's really a tough um, tough on the liver to, to digest it. Okay. But more importantly, and this will go into the, uh, you know, the fruit itself and the sweeteners and such. The problem is, is that when your brain gets sweet, okay, when it gets a sweetness and the, the stomach doesn't get the calories, your brain says, where are the calories? And it begins and keeps the cravings alive. You want to write that one down. It keeps the cravings alive. What you really don't want to do is who the heck wants to do this uh, if you're always continuously craving sugar. And our goal is to uh, extinguish the sugar cravings, okay, so that you don't crave sugar after the meal or at night or whenever your tough time on the weekend when your tough time is, when your trigger time is, you want to avoid having this mental, physical, overall draw craving to sugar. I study all the time cravings and denial, but we're going to stick with cravings right now. How the body actually, uh, deep in the limbic brain, co-ops your consciousness, literally co-ops your consciousness to rationalize decisions you've made days or weeks or months before to ingest this sweet taste. Now look gang, you're not really looking for a sweet taste on your tongue or a crunchy or whatever, but you're somehow your body has co-opted your thought process over such a long time that you really want to have it. So you want to quiet that noise as best you can, which brings me to the fruit, and then we'll go on to the, the sweeteners, okay? The fruit itself, the high glycemic, high fructose fruits, the, the bananas and the apples and the hybridized stuff, the seedless grapes and the seedless oranges, these things can't recreate in nature. They've been hybridized over 300 years, for fructose so that they have a higher concentration of sweetness, right? Now, what I do suggest, and people, I don't know if you know this, but <clears throat> one of the ways that people get off of opioids, you remember probably the days of methadone, but nowadays it's called Suboxone, which is one of the main drugs. And it's, you know, if you were to get a bad dose of Oxycontin or something, it could be fentanyl and you could die. And it's helped a lot of people ease off. So it steps them down into suboxone. And what I suggest, and I think this is important, so you might want to write this one down. That's a little tick I have, by the way. I say write this down when I think it's important, is that 
you want to maybe use just a little bit of berries, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, strawberries, um, just a little bit of berries to, to help you with that sweet, maybe after that meal or maybe in the evening. Okay, just a little bit as you're passing through your first 30 or so 60 days of trying to get off of sugar. All right. I think this is a super important and, and actually very successful process. You may eventually find that even that is going to create cravings. And it happens as you heal. Okay. As you heal up, from sugar, from processed sugar, ultra processed sugar and flour, you, you begin to, uh, like you will know that like really high glycemic stuff, real high fructose stuff, the all the tropical fruits and the mangoes and the bananas and the ripe, ripe bananas are really a problem. Um, uh, th this stuff is causing you uh, craving creation. Okay, it's creating uh, uh, cravings for sugar, it's not creating more banana cravings, it's creating sugar. You really want the process, the ultra processed carbs. And people are really shocked when they find that sweeteners, monk fruit, uh, xylitol, and it goes on and on, you know, stevia and all this kind of stuff, even the natural stuff and even the teas, okay, keeps the cravings alive. This is the one thing you want to stop. Again, nobody wants to do this if they continue craving. And again, what happens is you light up this sweet taste. We have to move you away from sweet. Peppers will start tasting sweet. Uh, carrots will taste really sweet. Macadamia nuts will taste like candy. You really need to move away from sweet. It takes less than seven to 10 days for your entire system, your, your taste buds to, to change. And that this, you know, the, the difference in how you're tasting the food. If you were to go 30 days, your normal ice cream treat would end up tasting too syrupy sweet, right? In the world of ultra processed carbs, what they search for is something called the bliss point, okay? And the bliss point is that place that's not too syrupy sweet, but sweet enough. So they try and get right in the middle of the average person who is on the standard American diet to change, uh, to, to ingest their new product, whatever their new different flavor of cookie is or what have you. And that's called the bliss point, okay? Now, you want to completely avoid anything that has to do with the bliss point, all right? So um, again, a real quick recap. If you want to really just get away from sugar for a time. It doesn't matter. Any amount of reduction is going to be good for you or your family. You know, and this will help with kids. If you can give them a little bit of berries and make a game of it uh, and reduce their sugar take intake. Remember kids under five or six, they're not doing any shopping gang and they will do what you're doing. Okay. But the whole job for this, uh, for this healing, literal brain reward chemical healing and you can check another other videos out for that, but how to heal your brain reward chemicals from the, the pathways that fructose um, has drilled into or grooved out is to reduce the amount of sugar fructose that you're eating, okay? If you can do that, the cravings, the physical cravings will subside, and then you can start on the mental gain. Again, this is a completely another video, but after you get 30 days or 30, 45 days away from the sugar, you're going to see weight loss. You're going to see your skin clearing up. You're going to see a lot of cool things happen. Your brain fog is going to clear. A lot of cool things are happening. Um, but and, and, and you'll have a little bit of time. It won't be as impulsive. Like you won't say, I want ice cream or I want this or I, I want that candy bar at the checkout. And you won't be impulsively eating it. The You'll have time to think it through, to think your commitment through. And when you do that, then the mental part of this starts. You guys all know that 85, 90% of people that lose any amount of weight gain it all back in the first year. And that's because they didn't master the, the mental game. After they muscled through the, you know, and every diet book on the planet says the exact same thing you know, reduce the white stuff, reduce the sugar. And when you do that, you can muscle through it, 
But if you don't do the second part of it, which is, you know, our work essentially, um, which is that emotional game, why you were attracted to it in the first place, then you're just bound to repeat it. But for this video, let's stick with, let's get the physical behind you. Let's get the reduction of the processed sugar behind you. And the way to do that is to reduce the amount, also reduce the amount of large amounts of fruit and fruit juice and fruit juice and dried fruit just take right off the list. You're not going to be able to do that because it will just keep the cravings going. So please, if this is met, if this is uh, been informative or helpful for you to please like and subscribe and uh, you can find information down in the show notes and we will talk to you real, real soon. Grab a copy of uh, the free book and you'll be able to uh, see what else we, we're up to. Thanks a lot. We'll talk to you real soon. Bye for now.